Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another one of our double shot interviews and I'm joined by Simon Botherway, the chairman of the government's Financial Markets Authority Establishment Board. And welcome to interest.co.nz, Simon. Thanks Morning, for joining. Thanks, Gareth. Look, um, you've obviously um, made a lot of progress in create, creating the FMA now. You've appointed a CEO, Sean Hughes, mm -hmm. um, last week. Can you tell us a little bit about him and why he was chosen and, and what your hopes are for, for him in the role? Yeah, well, we're very pleased to have achieved this milestone. I think it's, it was always going to be an important um, milestone in terms of the uh, overall development of the, of the FMA. Um, Sean is an expatriate Kiwi and he's been overseas for about 20 years. Um, he's got a lot of, he's got very extensive regulatory experience as well as litigation um, and white collar crime investigation experience. Um, I think of probably of most relevance uh, is two stints at ASIC. So in his first stint there between 99 and 2003, he was involved in the implementation of the financial services reform. Um, uh, Act and its um, and, and the the rollout of the, the licensing, particularly with respect to um, uh, to financial advice. So, I think that that experience is very relevant to what we're um, to to where the regulatory environment in New Zealand is going. To be not not just with respect to financial advisors, but also with respect to trustees, to auditors. Um, and potentially fund managers, depending on the outcome of the Securities Act review. Um, he's most recently been a senior executive le leader at corporations at ASIC and reporting to Belinda Gibson, one of the um, one of the six full-time commissioners at ASIC. So a very senior role uh, and, and highly experienced in, um, in litigation and enforcement and, and in surveillance. So we, we think that those skills are very relevant. He's also got private sector experience most recently with ANZ and NAB and, and for ANZ he was a global head of compliance so he, he's, seen, um, he's seen, the, seen regulation from the private side and, and from, the, um, from the regulator enforcement side so we think that, that gives him a very broad relevant range of experience for this role. And was it a, a highly sought after role? I mean, did you have some some good other good applicants as well? Yeah, well, look, we had a very good um, we had a good long list and a very good short list. So we had both international and local candidates on that short list, and we were very pleased with the quality that, that we had. But uh, but Sean was the clear standout uh, amongst that field. And um, the FMA bill is currently working its way through through Parliament, um, mm. and you're looking to have the FMA up and running from the 1st of April next year. You, you're hopeful that target will be met? Yeah, we're hope, ho hoping it's not actually going to be on the 1st of April, but, um, but, but yeah, we're certainly looking forward to... Uh, um, in terms of um, our progress against our sort of key milestones, we believe we're on track for an April delivery. Um, we've got a draft statement of intent, um, draft... Uh, well, a range of draft budget scenarios um, which we have um, furnished to the MED for their consideration. Um, we've, we've done a lot of work on what the governance structure should be and we've looked a little bit at, at, at how, you might, um, how you might structure the organisation, in particular to accommodate the, the two areas that we believe require a, a significant upgrade in terms of um, capacity and capability and they are one uh, in the area of market intelligence and secondly in the area of surveillance. And just, just touching on market intelligence, so globally regulators are moving to um, to create these market intelligence units because um, what is clear is that, is that they is that regulators hadn't kept abreast of financial market innovation and just weren't aware of the extent of the of the risks to the to the um, not only to the banking, se banking system, but to the but to the financial market system um, in, in general. Uh, and if you have a look at IOSCO, um, the, the the new IOSCO principles require securities regulators to keep the um, uh, to keep systemic risks under review, and, and they, they have widened that definition of systemic f um, beyond the um, the current accepted definition, which which relates to the. Uh, the integrity of the banking system or the payment system. Um, so OSCO has, has really broadened that definition. They've also they also require securities regulators to keep their perimeter of of regulation under review. So your market intelligence function is is, is informing your organisation as to what's happening out there in the markets, both macro and micro, internationally and locally, 
uh, and what impact that might have long term on the um, on the integrity of the markets. So, um, the in the US you've seen the implementation of the Dodd Frank bill, which is which is a very comprehensive set of reforms. Um, uh, the FSA is is looking at uh, at at, at, this, at a similar type of function, and of course in the, in Europe you've got the, the European Systemic Risk, Risk Board, which is um, which has also got this um, research and intelligence function. Okay, and the FMA is going to have some, I guess, new powers that the Securities Commission doesn't have. Um, what would you view as the key ones? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's got a range. I mean, depending on. Uh, you mentioned before that, that that it's not legislation yet, so yeah. that, that that bill is um, is in, in fact going to be considered by the select committee. But um, I suppose there are a couple there. There is the um, uh, the search and seizure powers. Um, there's probably the one that that will be most um, talked about will be this part three power, this um, derivative action power, which is based on uh, on ASIC section fifty power, and that is the that really relates to the um, to the right of the regulator to step into the shoes of an aggrieved party to uh, to take an action, um, and th and I would think that that will relate to mostly relate to directors' duties, sort of sections one three one through one three eight of the Companies Act, and <clears throat> really that's um, uh, I think it's important that people understand that, that, that these aren't these aren't new offences and it's not a new right of action. It is simply um, uh, it's simply that the regulator has the capacity to step into the shoes of an aggrieved party and take an action, because typically, what what has uh, liquidators have typically used those those powers or or that that that, that, that right of action to recover um, you know, assets or, um, or or cash or get some economic benefit back for for that for an aggrieved party, but the the test that a liquidator would take purely relates to to, to economic recovery, whereas the FMA could take a view that um, that an action is in the is in the public interest, and that will be its primary test whether it is in the public interest or not. And and you'll also well, the FMA will also, if the bill goes through in its current form, be able to take action on behalf of investors against auditors and even independent report writers. Is that that right? Well, certainly auditors. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the whole area of um, independent reports does need a, a substantial. Uh, review. Uh, my, this is my personal view. I think that um, the, the way that the independent experts have been selected, um, the the nature of their mandate, um, uh, you know, the, the the way that they perhaps their um, their opinion has been somewhat narrowed by the by the terms of the mandate that they've been given, and that that may not have been well understood, uh, and the and the process that that they've gone through for. Um, uh, for for getting the information that's required to, um, to for them to form an opinion, I think in some instances we've seen uh, cases where perhaps they didn't have all the information, or perhaps they may not have looked hard enough, or, or it may have, it may simply have been withheld from them. Um, so I think I think the I think the things that need to be looked at are the are the means by which independent experts are appointed, um, their their mandate, and to whom they have a, a duty, and uh, and the their access to information and the information that, 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 that needs to be provided to them or, or, or should be required to be provided to them. Do you have a particular model you'd like to see created? And, and I guess one thing in my mind as well is, is, is there a question over who pays them and, and perhaps whether that yep. aligns them with the person that pays them? Are, are there concerns about that as well? I, I, think, I think the incentive alignment is, um, is, is, is very much a, a part of this overall consideration. So. Um, no, is there a particular model? No, I don't. I don't have a particular model in mind. Although I think that 